This is an L98 engine on a 1991 Corvette and I've had some problems with it after it sits for a day or two it doesn't want to start very well and I suspect that I've got a problem with my fuel pump uh, or the check valve and the pump not holding pressure so I'm going to take and attach this uh, fuel pressure gauge um, to a Schrader valve. It's on the fuel rail and this, this particular Corvette it's in a bad place. It's, if you can see it or not, but it's right here and it's underneath the uh, manifold pressure sensor. For, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove that manifold pressure sensor. There's also another little vacuum line right here that's in the way. So I'm going to just pull that off while I get the uh, fuel pressure gauge attached and take the Schrader valve cover off right here. And uh, once I get the fuel pressure gauge on, I will reconnect the manifold pressure sensor here and that little vacuum line there before I start the engine. I've got the fuel pressure gauge attached. It's kind of a mess in there because uh, there's a lot of stuff that's got to be in the same place. But once I got the fuel pressure gauge attached, I went ahead and reconnected the vacuum line and the manifold pressure line just on a temporary basis so that if we start the engine, at least everything's hooked up correctly. Creative use of duct tape will let you get the uh, fuel pressure gauge stuck right to the windshield so when you're sitting inside the car and you turn the switch on, you can actually see what happens. With the engine at idle, it should be about 40 pounds. So I'm interested in what happens once we turn the engine off. Well, I turned the engine off about a minute ago, no more than a minute ago, and it's already dropped from 40 to 30. So, I've heard some ideas uh, on forums and such, and actually reading the factory service manual, we can suspect either a leaky check valve in the uh, fuel pump, or maybe a leaking pulsator in the uh, fuel sending unit that's in the tank, possibly a leaky injector, but for it to drop from 40 down to uh, 25 pounds in the space of under two minutes makes me suspect uh, what's in the tank. We can pinch off a line and maybe verify that. We'll try that next. If you're around these C4 Corvettes long enough and you're trying to diagnose fuel problems, one thing you'll hear a lot is somebody telling you to pinch off a line. Hard to find one of those lines to start with and uh, the best place that I could find is back at the fuel tank and then there's uh, actually three tubes going into that filler or into the tank area and it turns out that this top one up here is actually the supply line so I've got a pair of vice grips that got some soft edges on them and I've got it in there and I tried to clamp off this hose to see if uh, that will stop the pressure drop up at the front of the car. As it turns out with the supply line blocked back at the tank I'm still getting the pressure drop up at the front of the car so the next step according to the factory service manual is to block the pressure uh, return line. So I'll take my vice grips off of the supply line at the top and attach them to this uh, fuel return line down here at the uh, bottom right hand part of the tank. I'm building the pressure to 40 pounds and turning the switch off and pinching both the supply and the return lines back at the tank. And in each case the pressure is dropping. It's now down to I think 15 pounds and it should really hold longer than that. Um, according to the factory service manual, that seems to indicate that I've got some at least probably one injector that's leaking. And these are the fuel injectors right here. And then those two back there, so four per side. Uh, these are the original Multex, I think is how you say it. And so they would be 25 years old. It's probably just time for some new injectors. Since I have some time, I'm going to go ahead and take this fuel sending unit out anyway, just to uh, take a look at it and make sure everything's okay inside the tank. And the first thing you want to do is take the uh, negative terminal off the battery to make sure you don't have any electrical power on the car because you're dealing with gasoline here. Um, getting these old hoses off was a little bit of a, a tussle. Um, as I did that, I started getting some uh, fuel leaking out of them, so I went up and relieved the fuel pressure off of the uh, front of the car using the fuel pressure gauge relief uh, mechanism, so I did that. Um, I took some compressed air and kind of blew out clear on the edges to get all the dirt out of that I possibly could. Uh, and, uh, and then it's just taking a 10 millimeter uh, socket and taking out a number of bolts that go around uh, this. So I'm just about ready to pull this. So getting the sending unit out of the car is actually somewhat anticlimactic. It came out of the car really nice. You just have to turn it a few turns 
at times to get it to, out of that uh, rectangular hole. Once I did, I found a lot of corrosion. That's the, actually the old uh, rubber gasket there that I'll have to try to gently pry up and not drop more trash and debris into the tank. Down at the bottom of the tank, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a, a, a little plastic tray down there. Hard to see, but yeah, there you can see it. All right. So anyway, um, comparing the old sending unit here with this new Delphi unit that I bought, it's a, a pretty good match, really. Kind of interesting when you think about gasoline and electricity. It's eventually, there's bare terminals that are immersed in gasoline. No matter how you cut it, that's what's going on. Um, this thing, you can see it or not, but there's a lot of corrosion on it. Um, it may be working just fine. I don't really know, but this one cost me about 280 bucks shipped from Amazon. Uh, I guess it's worthwhile for me, peace of mind, just knowing that I've got something new and good in the car uh, versus the $280 spent maybe on a part that maybe didn't necessarily need. So uh, getting this area scraped clean was tedious work, and I tried to use a back rag as much as I could to catch crap as I scraped it off. Um, I ran the tank down to about a quarter full. People say that you can change these with a full tank of gas, and that's probably true, but if you drop stuff in the tank that you want to clean out, then you've got a big problem. And even when I got done, I still looked down below, and in that uh, fuel pickup area, it's hard to see, but uh, there was a bunch of rust down there. So I took a uh, siphon hose and uh, siphoned out a little bit of gasoline and the end of the hose just kind of guided it around down the bottom of the tank and it uh, sucked out the debris that had fallen in there. So I'm about ready to do the reinstallation now. So the 1991 L98 has a new uh, fuel pump in it, whether it needs one or not. Um, I'm not one to just throw parts at things, but uh, I like to know that I have some level of reliability as well. So uh, we'll see if this makes a difference, and if not, then we'll probably go to new injectors next because they're 25 years old too. So I reconnected the battery, uh, and I'm about ready to fire this thing up before I put the rubber boot back in this area. I want to make sure that uh, all of my uh, connections are tight and not leaking. Once that's done, then I'll put the rubber boot back in and give this thing a wash, take it out for a spin. So I started the car up, and uh, one thing I noticed right away was the pressure came up about 10 to 15 pounds higher than it used to uh, before I actually started the engine. So it came up to the factory specified 40 PSI. Um, so part of my problems might be a weak fuel pump. We're just going to drive the car for a while and find out. And uh, so we're, the last thing to do is to disconnect the uh, fuel pressure gauge. Remember to uh, uh, bleed off the pressure using that and uh, your plastic hose to dump it into a container before you disconnect the uh, fuel pressure gauge. Otherwise, you'll end up with a lot of fuel on top of a hot engine, which is not a good thing. So we'll see what happens.